Hello, everyone. My name is Satish Nagula, and I'm an Associate Professor of Medicine and the GI Fellowship Program Director in the Division of Gastroenterology at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai in New York City. I had the privilege of working with my distinguished co-authors, Dr. Sravanthi Parasa at Swedish Medical Center, Dr. Lauren Lane from the Yale University School of Medicine, and Dr. Shal Shah from the University of California, San Diego in preparing this clinical practice update on high quality upper endoscopy. There is limited published guidance on what comprises a quality upper endoscopy. The goal of this clinical practice update is to provide an expert review on how to perform a high quality examination. There are a few main highlights to this clinical practice update. Recent studies have demonstrated a high rate of missed cancers on EGD, one meta-analysis demonstrating that nearly 11% of upper GI cancers occurred within three years of a purported negative exam. This underscores the importance of improving the quality of your visual examination through adequate luminal insufflation and mucosal cleansing. Image enhancement technologies, such as narrowband imaging from Olympus, eye scan from Pentax, or LCI from Fuji are all useful adjuncts that further enhance the visual exam over high-definition white light. Longer withdrawal times have also been shown to improve the diagnostic yield for upper GI pathology. Basically, the same rules apply for EGDs and colonoscopy. Clean thoroughly, look carefully, and withdraw slowly. We strongly encourage the use of standardized scoring systems, such as the LA-grade classification of erosis esophagitis or the forest classification of peptic ulcers. These scores provide a common language to describe endoscopic findings and allow you to more accurately link the visual findings to disease severity and outcome. The most widely used scoring systems are graphically depicted in figure two. Lastly, we encourage endoscopists to follow the standardized biopsy protocols for the evaluation of specific conditions, such as H. pylori, celiac disease, gastric intestinal metaplasia, and Barrett's esophagus. These protocols can greatly enhance the diagnostic yield of the exam and are clearly delineated in table one. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. We hope you find this clinical practice update on high quality upper endoscopy to be a useful document to enhance your upper endoscopic procedures.